to change the list actually displaying on screen, we need to be able to create a uh, process to be able to search through this uh, by using the input. So um, we need to be able to uh, manipulate the state uh, that's happening in here and to be able to handle the change that's going on inside of it and then filter it. So let's go ahead and start uh, setting up the state of the input and um, setting up the handle change. Okay, so let's cruise on back over. Uh, let's go to the list container here. Um, and so let's set up state. So we have to say constructor. Inside of the constructor, we say super. Cool. And then we say this dot state equals. It's an object. Um, so you can have a whole bunch of stuff in here, but in this case, it's just going to be input. Okay. And we're just going to have it be a blank string. Um, if we actually put something in there, the default would be something else, uh, but we just need it to be blank. And then to uh, bind this together, the input and, you know, whatever's it being manipulated all the time and changing, um, this is when that auto bind comes into effect. Um, so we say auto bind this. Okay, so this is especially handy if there's more than one. We also have to import this at the top. Import. Um, there's forget the auto. Sorry. From React auto bind. There we go. Okay. Great. Cool. So that's all set up. Let's just make sure it's not broken. Awesome. Cool. So nothing has really changed which is good, we're not getting any errors. All right, so now the next thing that we have to do is make a function that is going to be grabbing the information in the actual um, input. So we say handle change. So this takes an argument, an event. Okay, so that's going to be like the typing uh, that's going to be going on in the input. Um, and so inside of here, we say this dot set state. And inside of here, uh, we are going to basically be changing uh, what's going on. We're going to be saying this is okay that the state is changing um, for the input. So we say input event dot target dot value. Okay. Great. So let's go ahead and pass down the handle change. This dot handle change. So um, it's talking about like in this instance. Okay. So let's go on over and add this function to our input. Um, and we're actually going to be adding two different things in here. Oh, and actually, whoops, my bad. We also need to pass down uh, the state. So we say, uh, I'm just going to call input equals this dot state. Then we have handle change as well. Let's go back over to the list here. So we say value of the input equals curly braces this dot props dot input and then we say on change so this is an action uh, this is an event that it's listening for equals this dot props dot handle change okay so that's all that we are looking for so if we scroll on back here we should still be able to type in here oh uh oh what do we do Hmm. Well, let's scroll back over and let's take a look. Okay. So, ah, 
here it is. So I was not specific enough in this dot state. I need to say specifically this dot state dot input. Here we go. Let's check that. There we go. All right, cool. So we can start to add stuff in there now. All right, so the next step now is to actually make the filter function that we are going to be doing. So we're going to be making it right here in render. And what this is going to be doing, it's basically going to be replacing the dog's list with the filtered list um, in real time. So that's pretty cool. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, so let's let's declare a variable let filter dogs equal uh, dogs dot filter. Okay, so uh, what this is doing is taking it's going to be filtering through our variable dogs. So that's why it says dot filter dogs. Okay, and then it needs an argument. Um, we'll call this word, just so we can keep them individual. And then the next uh, part of filter is that it takes a function. Okay. Okay, and then we say if word dot index of this dot state dot input does not equal negative one return true okay so basically it's saying if there's nothing inside there don't return anything um, but if whatever we're typing into the input if if it can find the index of whatever we're typing in there to actually return it. So the next piece of the puzzle to make sure that this works is that we have to replace um, dogs with filter dogs. So it knows that's what it's going through so then it actually starts to take some action. Okay, so let's scroll back. Let's see if this works. Let refresh. Look at that, wire hair fox terrier, CW, there's another, there's a whippet, um, let's see, um, French bulldog, finish, awesome, cool, but there's still kind of a problem here because um, if I, let's say, if, let's say I want that wire hair fox terrier again, if I put a lowercase w, it doesn't even come up, so it's looking for the exact match. So it needs to be a capital, and we don't really want that. That's not very practical. Not everyone is going to be typing capital all the time. So we just tag on here to lowercase. So no matter what we're searching all the time, um, it can just like be added on there. Um, okay, and then uh, in the input, we are also going to just change it to lower case so then it knows that it's just automatically always going to match so everything is always going to be lower case um, let's see so w oh, no it needs to refresh there we go w look at that wire fox terrier whip it chow chow uh, Cool English settler, toy spaniel, um, finish spit. So this is pretty fun. Um, you can see that it's pretty applicable to a lot of different things. Um, and so I hope that this tutorial helps you on the rest of your React journey and that it helps you with further projects. All right. Thanks so much and have a good one.